Welcome back to another lecture on unit number 7 which is going to concentrate on the probability distributions, normal distributions and the T distributions. And so I want to start with the probability distributions. And when we started with probabilities, remember I told you we have in nature what we call deterministic experiments. And then we have what we call the random experiments. When we talk about deterministic experiments, it means that the outcomes are already known. And so it doesn't matter the number of times or the number of ways you're going to perform the experiment, the outcome is already known. And then we talk about the random experiments, which we tried linking to probability. The probabilities we are talking about the likelihood of something going to happen or the chance of something going to happen after an experiment has been performed. And so if you are going to perform an experiment, which is a random experiment, we don't know the outcome. It is only when the experiment is performed and then the outcome will be known. Such experiments are what we call the random experiments. And in random, it is random in the sense that if you perform the experiment, any outcome is likely to occur. Okay. So we talk about it to be like a random experiment. And in random experiments, we make use of what we call the likelihood events or equally likelihood. It is equally likelihood because on the surface, it is assumed that if you perform the experiment, any outcome, each of the outcome, each of the things that we are going to use to get the outcomes, any of the outcome is likely to, it has the same chance of what happening. For instance, if you are going to touch a fair coin, then it is assumed that the fair coin had the faces head and the tail. So if it's a fair coin it is well touched, then it is assumed that either a head or a tail is going to have, okay. The head and the tail has the same chance of going to okay. And so that is it about probabilities. But as we move on, today our focus is going to be on what we call the random variables and the expectations. Random variables and expectations. So likening the, we want to liken the idea of random variable or random experiments to random variables. So we are saying that a random variable is a function that assigns a real number to each experiment, I mean to, to each element in the sample space of a random experiment. We are saying that a random variable is a function that assigns a real number to each element in the sample space of a random experiment. And so when we perform the random, we perform an experiment, then it's assumed that we are going to get outcomes. These outcomes will form what we call the sample space. And the term sample space, each of the outcomes in the sample space is what we call the sample points. So for instance, if I told a fair die once, then the sample space, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the possible outcomes. Now, in all, this one becomes the sample space. But each outcome, each of these in the sample space, is what we call a sample point. So one is a sample point, 
2 is a sample point, 3 is a sample point, 4 is a sample point, 5 is a sample point, 6 is a sample point. In the same vein, if I toss, let's say if I toss, or if I roll a coin twice, if I toss a coin twice, then the sample speed that I'm expecting is that it's likely I'm going to get a head and a head. I'm going to get a head and a tail. I'm going to get a tail and a head, or I can get a tail and a tail. So the head head is a sample point. Head tail is a sample point. Tail head is a sample point. Then tail tail is also a sample point. Okay. So we are saying that when we perform that test, we obtain sample points in sample space. I've talked about that one. We are generally not interested in the sample points themselves, but in some number associated with these sample points. We are not interested in the sample points themselves, but what we are after will be some numbers or some number that is associated with the sample points. Okay? And so we are saying that a random variable, we are going to denote a random variable by a capital letter. In this case, let's assume a random, let's denote a random variable by a capital letter CX. And so if we are interested in the number of heads in this experiment, if we are interested in the number of heads that will show up, if you are interested in the number of heads that is going to show up, then we can have values such as 0, 1, and then 2. Why are we saying so? Here, if you are interested in the number of heads, heads show up. Our head show up. Okay, then our focus is going to be on the heads, but not necessarily on the head. So in this experiment, you notice that here, if we are denoting a random experiment by a capital letter X, then our focus is going to be when we have number of S heads showing up, how many of the heads are here? There are two. So we can have a number to be two here. How many of the heads are here? In this case, it's one head, so we can have one. How many of the heads are here? We can also have one. And in this instance, there's no head, so that one is what? Zero. So in this case, we can say that x head head is equal to two. It means that the number of heads for this sample random variable is going to be two. Here, we have x head tail, and that one is one. How many heads are here? One. We can also talk about x tail head, and that one is one as well. And then x tail tail is also equal to zero. Are you with me? Now, so that is basically about the idea of the random variable. So we are noting values for the case where we are talking about hair shows up. So if a hair should show up here, what head head, then we are saying that it will we're going to assume a value two. If a hair tail is going to show up, we are going to have hair tail to assume the number one. Tail head is going to have a value one because there's just one head. And then tail tail is going to have a value zero because there's no head in that instance. Now, when we are done with this, now let's talk about probability function. So from here, we're going to talk about probability functions or probability distributions. So probability functions. So probability distributions. So what is it about probability functions or probability distributions? Now, a probability distribution consists of the values of a random variable and their corresponding probabilities. They consist of values of a random variable and their corresponding probabilities. Values of a random variable. 
and their corresponding probabilities. And that is what we term as probability distribution. Are with me? So here, as we move on, you, I will get to the point where we talk about the definition in detail. So just let us understand the fact that when we talk about probability distribution, our focus is going to be the number of the values of a random variable and their corresponding probabilities. Basically, we have two types of probability distributions. The first one is the discrete probability distribution. Then the next one is the continuous continuous probability distributions. So I'm going to take them one by one. When we talk about discrete, normally discrete variables are values that take countable number of values. They have a countable number, or they have they have a countable number of values. And we say that they have countable number of values, which means that they are zoom pool number values. For instance, I can talk about 0, 1, 2, 3, up to infinity. So they are zoom pool number values. For instance, if I come to your classroom and I ask you to talk about the number of students in the class, you count and say it is maybe 45. 45 is a whole number. So that number 45 is a discrete variable, it's a discrete value, it's a discrete variable. So if we talk about maybe four points are tossed, the outcomes for the number of heads obtained will be 0, 1, 2, 3, and maybe 4. Or when we toss a single die once, the outcomes is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are also discrete values. Okay? So when we talk about discrete variables, there are variables that assume whole number values. So probability distribution that has links with variables that assume whole number values are what we call probability, discrete probability distribution. On the other hand, when we talk about the, when we talk about the continuous probability distribution, then we are going to take it from the probability, the point of view that we are going to consider continuous variables. When we talk about continuous variables, they assume interval values. Normally, they are found in between some values, between, let's say, 1 and 2. So you can look at the numbers that can be found between the values 1 and 2. And these values are normally in decimal for their zoom fractional values. And they are measured. Okay? They are measured. So if you talk about height of an individual, height can be, your height can be something point something. Your, 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 your weight can be something point something. Okay? And maybe the distance that you travel to, to school can be something point something. So all these values are going to be continuous in nature. So continuous variables are zoom interval values. They are not in the form of whole numbers. They are zoom interval within a certain interval. And so that is it about continuous variable. Okay. So if you talk about temperature, the temperature of human beings can assume values between maybe 10 degrees and maybe 20 degrees. Uh, or, a, or any other two temperatures or values that uh, and for that matter. So these are the things we are talking about. When they assume interval values, they are continuous variables. Okay. Now, so moving forward, let's concentrate on the probability distributions and then now come out with their definition. Remember I told you that they talk about the values of the random variable with their corresponding probabilities. So let's assume I've told a die a, one, a die three times, okay? A, a, a coin, if I toss a coin three times. Then the possible sample space is that I'm going to have a head, head, head. I'll have head, head, tail. I'll have head, tail, head. I'll have tail, head, head. I'll have tail, head, tail. One, two, three, four, five. I'll have a uh, tail, tail, head. Okay? I can also have a 
one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. I can also have uh, tail head tail. Okay, we have tail head tail there. I can also have tail head head. Tail head head is also there. I can have head tail tail. Head tail tail. So I'm expecting eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the last one, of course, is going to be tail tail tail. Okay, so this is the sample space. And so here, they may assume numbers, values, zero, one, two, three. So for instance, my focus is on the number of hairs that show up. So it's about the number of hairs that are going to show up. What to date here? Here, when we come here, for the zero, x, tail, I'm talking about number of hairs. So tail, tail, tail. Now, when we have tail, 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 in fact, there's no head here. So here it's going to assume the number zero. Then the next one is, let's say head, head, tail. So in that sense, in this sense, we are going to have two heads. That not the case. So that one is two. We can also have an instance where we have head, tail, head. So X of that. Here too, we are going to have two. Okay? When we have X tail head head. That one is going to be two because we have tail head head. That one is going to be two because we have two of the heads there. Okay. Now let's look at situations where we have X to be tail tail head. In this sense, there's just one head. So this is one. Then we can also talk about head X head head tail. Head tail tail. That one too is one. There's just one head. Okay. So let's see a point where we have maybe just one head. Okay. So we can talk about X. That is tail head tail. That one too is just one head. Okay. Is there? Mm -hmm. So now the last one is that where we have X to be head head. And then head. That's when we have three heads. Now, what are their corresponding probabilities? In the instance where we have the instance where we have this t t t, that one in terms of the probability is going to be one out of four eight. Where the sample space consists of eight sample points. Okay. So in terms of their probability, it's going to be 1 out of 8. Now let's look at this one too, where we have just two heads. Okay, how many are they? 1, 2, 3. So this one is going to be 3 out of 8. Then in the, in the instance where we have just one head, that one we have 1, 2, 3. In terms of probability, we have 3 of them through 3 out of 8. And the instance where we have just one head, and three heads, we have three heads. How many are they? One. So that one is one out of eight. So these are the corresponding proper probabilities. So I can draw a table to come up with the 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 the, 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 uh, the random variables here with their corresponding probabilities. Okay. So when I do that. Then I'm talking about what we call the probability distribution. So let's look at this table. So I can have a table like this. And the table I talk about sample points. Then I'll talk about values of x. Remember, the x is talking about the number of heads that show up. Okay? So that's, that's the random variable. And then there are probabilities. So probabilities. So the sample points, the first one we have head, 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 tail. Head, tail, head. 
then we can have head till head head okay till head till I can have uh, till till head okay so one two three four five six I can have uh, uh mm -hmm. one left okay i can have till 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 let me go for till 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 and then look for the last one which of course may be let's see you have till head head mm -hmm. so we can look for the last one which can be head till till head you have head till till there no there's no head till till so head Head till till. Okay. So if there's no head till till, so that is it. So now let's come here. Okay. Now let's look at the values of x. How many heads are showing up? The number of heads that are showing up will be three. The number of heads that are showing up will be two. Here we have two. Here we have zero. Of course, here we have one. So in terms of the corresponding probabilities, this one is going to be 1 out of 8, this one is going to be 1 out of 8, this one is 1 out of 8, 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 and of course 1 out of 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But you notice that if our focus is going to be on those that have two heads showing up, then if we add the three here, okay, I'm going to get three out of eight. If my focus is going to be on those that have just one head, then if I add one, two, three here, I am going to get. So let me change this one. So now you see it well. So I can have head, tail, tail, and of course the last one, tail, head. T, T, T. So this will be 1 and this will be 0. Okay. So if I'm, my focus is on the number of pairs here, 1, 1, 1. So here I'll have 3 of that. And that one will be to be 3 out of 8. And you notice that whenever we add the probabilities in the probability distributions, they should sum up to a 1. It should give us a 1, 1. So you notice that 1 out of 8 plus 3 out of 8 plus 3 out of 8 plus 1 out of 8 is 8 out of 8, and that is going to give you 1. That is one fact you have to understand. Okay. So we can have it in a table form like this, and then we move on. Okay. So when we have this table, the values of the random variable will be our corresponding probabilities. It's what we call the probability distribution. And we can also put them in this form. We can write them in ordered pairs form. Okay? We can put them in the form of ordered pairs. In that sense, we can write it as a function. So maybe f into. Let's assume this. So when we have zero. It is associated with 1 out of 4, 8, comma. Then we can have 1, comma. When we have just 1, that one is 3 out of 8. Then we can have 2, comma, 3 out of 8. And then 3, comma, 1 out of so this one can be kept in the form as an ordered pair. So in general, we say that the probability function is going to be written as this. We have the probability function written as this. So we have this x subset i comma f x subset i. Where we are going to say that this one is the random variable and this one is a corresponding one probability, like how I've written this one. The way I've written this one is a probability function in this form. And so if I want to write it in general, the general form, 
have x subset i comma f into bracket x subset i where this one is talking about the random variable which is this one and this one talks about the probability this corresponding probability okay then we are saying that the eyes here these i's the i is from 0 1 2 up to So when we move on to, we can also put it in this form. We can also put it in this form that if I have the function, let's say f subset i, and that one is going to be equal to probability of x is equal to x. Okay? Probability of x is equal to x. And so what we want to say is that if I have the function f of 2 in this situation, it's f of 2, then we can put it as p, okay, where x, which is the random variable, is equal to 2. And that one is going to be equal to its corresponding probability. Its corresponding probability. And what is the corresponding probability? The corresponding probability in this case is what? 3 out of 4. Eight. So if I ask you to find f of 1, what will f of 1? It's going to p into x equal to what? 2. F, F, x is equal to 1. And that is equal to mm -hmm. when in this case the random variable is 1. What is this corresponding probability? That one is what? 3 out of 8. What is f of 0? So f of 0 is going to be p equal to x is equal to p into x is equal to 0. And that is equal to 1 out of 4. Eight. Okay. So they can ask you so many things of this nature. And you know what to do. Now, let's try our hands on this particular question. They are saying that two dice are rolled together once. Let x be a random variable representing the sum of the numbers that show up on the two dice. I'm taking the question once again. Two dice are rolled together once. Let x be a random variable representing the sum of the numbers that show up on the two dice. Draw a table showing the probability function for this experiment. Then use your table to find i, f of 5, i, i, f of 8, then i, i, i. The said that the, is said that f of x i is greater than four but less than nine. Okay, so let's look at how we can get the sample space. It is when we have gotten the sample space that we should be able to do that. So let's say let a represent the first die, and then the b represent the second die. So we can have a table of this nature. I can have A to B. So these are the, the numbers that will be on the first die. And these are the numbers that will be on the second die. Okay. Let me try to economize the, the board so that we can draw other table. So here, the first die is going to be A, then the second die is going to be B. So now I have this. Okay. So I can have numbers on the first die: one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. Three, four, 
five, six. So I will have one comma one, one comma two, one comma three, one comma four, one comma five, one comma six, two comma one, two comma two, two comma three, two comma four, two comma five. Then two comma six. Now have three one, three two, three three, three four, three five, three six. Four one, four two, four three, four four, four five, four six. Five one, five two, five three, five four, five five, five six, six one, six two, six three, six four, six five, and then six. So if you count the number of sample points in all, we are going to have 36 sample points in the sample space. Okay. So the question is saying that let S be the random variable representing the sum of the numbers that show up on the torso of the die. Okay. So let's look at the table. So I have this table here. Let's look at how we can get a table of that nature. And I think we have identified this one, you can do this one. And so once we have this one, we are going to find out the number of hairs, the, num the, the sum of the numbers that show up. So if we sum this one, it's going to give us two. If we sum this one, that one is going to give us two. But this one, too, if we sum this one, it's also going, this one is going to give us three. This one is also going to give us three. So we are going to be looking for the numbers that appear so that when we sum, we give us three, we put them together. If we sum all these ones, they will give us four, so they will form one set. If we sum all these ones, they will give us five, we, it will form one set. All these ones will give us six, that will form one set. These ones will give us seven, form one set. These ones will give us eight, form one set. This one will give us nine, form one set. This one will give us 10 from a one set. This is 11 from a one set. And this is 12 from a one set. So this is what they mean. Okay. So I can have a table of this nature. So I'll have the sample point. So I have sample points. And then I'll have values, values of x, and I'll have probabilities. Okay. So like I said, the first sample point is going to be 1 comma 1. But if I sum 1 and 1, I'm going to get 2. And so the next numbers will be 2, 1, and then 1, 2. Then I'll look for the other set of numbers. That is 1, 3, okay? Then 3, 1. I can have 2, 2. Okay, I can have the next set of numbers to be 1, 4, 4, 1, 3, 3, 5, so 3, 2, and then 2, 3. Then the next set of numbers will be 1, 5, 5, 1. 3, 3, 
okay, 4 comma 2, and then 2 comma 4. Then the next set of numbers I will have 1 comma 6, 6 comma 1, I will have 4 comma 3, 3 comma 4, I'm after numbers that will sum to 7. I mean, those numbers that will sum up to 7. Then 5, comma 2, and then 2, comma 5. I can look for other numbers that will sum up to from 7, I go to 8. So I can get 6, comma 2, okay? 5, comma 3. 4,4, 4, 3,5. I can also get 2,6. I started with that one. Then gradually, you come to 6,3. That will give you 9. 3,6. 3, 5. And then, 6, 4, 4, 6, 5, 5. And then, uh, 5, 5. Okay, so 6, 4, that. And then I can have 6, 5. And I have 5, 6. Now we have the last one, 6, 6. And so when I come here, the sum of these numbers to represent the x, the sum of the numbers that you have. So this one is going to give me 3. This one will give me 4. This one will give me 5. This one will give me 6. This one will give me 7. This one will give me 8. This one will give me 9. This one will give me 10, 11, and then 4. So when we come for their corresponding probabilities, we are interested in how many of such numbers gave their sum to be 2, divided by the overall number of sample space. So this one is going to give me one instance. So this one is 1 out of 36, just 1. How many are here? 2. So 2 out of 36. How many are here? 3. So 3 out of 36. How many are here? 4. 4 out of 36. How many are here? 5. 5 out of 36. How many are here? 6. 6 out of 36. How many are here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 out of 36. How many are here? 4. 4 out of 36. How many are here? 3. 3 out of 36. How many are here? 2. 2 out of 36. How many are here? 1. 1 out of 36. And like I have said earlier, if you add these probabilities, it should give you 1. Okay. So now let's try to attempt the questions. We are done with the first part. We have prepared the tables. The first part is saying that from the, we have to find f of Five. So what is f of 5? That is where the sum gave you 5. What is the corresponding probability? So you can say that f of 5 is equal to p of x equal to 5. And that one is going to be 4 over 36. If you simplify this one, you are going to get 1 out of 9. Okay. Then the next one is f of 8. F of 8, the sum that gave you 8. Okay, what was the, how many numbers gave you that to give you the, with respect to the total, uh, the sum, the, the number of, of the, the number of sample points, the sample space, that gave you the probability here. So that one was 4 out of um, 8, 5 out of 36. Okay, so we are saying that that one is going to be P of X equal to 8. And that is equal to why is that? We are to find
we have to find this. I think it's nine, it will be something like that. Okay. So if that is the case, then we have to find a probability that is going to be between this one and this one. That's where the sum is four, where the sum is greater than four, but the sum is less than nine. So in that sense, we are going to have f of five plus, okay, f of six plus, f of seven plus, f of eight. Okay, it's greater than four, but it's less than what, nine. Then we find f of five. f of five is four out of 36, plus f of six, five out of 36, plus f of seven, six out of 36, plus f of eight, five out of 36. So five, four plus four, nine, plus six, 15, plus five, 20. So the answer is 20 out of 36. We can simplify this one for that. Uh, 2 into this is 10, 2 into this is uh, 18, 2 into this is 5, 2 into this is 9. So the final answer is 5 out of 9. So that is the answer for the question. So we are done with that one too. Okay. So your trial question is, the discrete random variable has the, has the given probability distribution. That is, so they gave you some they, they gave you some of the, they gave you the random variables and they also give you the probabilities. But one of the probability value was not given. And so you were to use your testing to find that one. And then find the probability of x is equal to 2. x is less than that and those things. Those things you can easily do that. Okay. Let's start. Okay, so move on. So, so far, we've been able to talk about probability distributions and their functions. Now what we are going to talk about now is about cumulative distribution function. Cumulative distribution function. Okay. So we have discussed the probability that a value of a random variable will take a particular number. That the value of a random variable x will take a particular number. However, we sometimes are interested in the probability that the random variable x has a value less than or equal to some number. Okay? So it can be less than or equal to or greater than or equal to a particular number. Or less than or equal to some number. So it means that it is going to move from where from the from the from the smallest point and then it will be added up to that particular point from a certain point then added up to one particular point. Okay. So suppose we are interested in the probability of getting at least two heads with the rolling of three balance coins. And so remember we have done this example already. And we said that if you are going to roll three coins once, then our sample space S is going to have the head, 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 tail, head, tail, head, head, tail, 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 head, tail, 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 head. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Then tail. this okay so if we are interested in getting at least two heads if we are interested in getting at least two heads if one is interested in getting at least two heads what does this mean that is the heads with two or more more okay so you can say that probability of getting x to be greater than or equal to two 
And so this is simply going to be probability of x equal to 2 plus probability of x equal to 3. Remember here, the random variable was in numbers 0, 1, 2, 3. I read me. And we have done this one earlier. So in that sense, if it is x is greater than or equal to 2, then we are expecting something like that. In that sense, what is the probability of getting x to be equal to 2? That is where 2 has are there. So we have 1, 2, 3. And this one is 3 out of 8 plus x equal to 3. That is all has to be 3. All, three, the, all the 3 are heads. So that is 1 out of 8. And so when we simplify this, we are going to get 4 out of 8, which is equal to 1 out of 8. So you can see that we are adding something up to a certain point from some point of view. So cumulative. It's from the word cumulative. Uh, cumulatively, we are adding in that order. Okay. So let's look at an example. 50 taxi drivers were asked of the number of road traffic accidents they have had in a year. The results are given in the following table. So let's look at the table. So we have the results, number of accidents. And then we shall have frequency. Okay. So the number of accidents maybe this time is representing X. So here they have one, two, three, up to five. So one zero, one, two, three. So five. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then with their corresponding frequencies, this is 15, 12, 9, 7. Then we have 5, 2. 5, 2. So 50 drive, taxi drivers were asked of the number of road accidents they have had in a year. Then these are the results given. Okay, so 15 said they have no accident, they've had no accident. 12 said they have had one accident each. Okay, then 9 said they have gotten two, 7 said that. Okay, now suppose we are, we choose a taxi driver, okay, at random from this group, and x is the number of road accidents the person chosen has had in the year. Find the probability mass function and the pro cumulative probability distribution function of x. Okay. So now, the B part, find that when we get there, I will explain those ones to you. So let's look at the A part. The solution is given that. So let's look at the table. So I can just find this one. Okay? So let me draw the table for you you understand how it is going to move. So let me maintain this one. And I have these three columns. 